Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about something that is near and dear to my wallet. How to save money when you're gluten free. Over the past four years, I cut my costs on gluten free foods by over 60% and you can too. So let's get to it. Something you don't think about when you're first prescribed a gluten free diet is the cost. Wait, 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 I think I misheard you. I have to pay more money to not eat all the foods I love? In case you didn't know, the cost of gluten free foods is approximately 242% that of regular foods. After the first few months on a gluten free diet, my credit card burst into flames. Not literally, of course, but maybe. In Canada, if you're diagnosed with celiac disease, you can claim those extra costs as a health expense. Because of that, I know exactly how much I've spent on gluten free products. Let's take a peek. In 2017, my first full year of eating gluten free, I spent an extra $642. In 2018, $443. And in 2019, $245. And we're not gonna talk about 2020 because I haven't done my taxes yet and because 2020 sucked and I think I bought a lot of gluten-free pizza and cried. Keep in mind, those numbers are the difference between the gluten-free product and the regular one. The gluten-free tax. Also, just because it's a health expense doesn't necessarily mean you get that money back. You still have to be able to afford it upfront and you only get a break at tax time if it hits a certain percentage of your overall income or if you have a lot of other health expenses. So just putting that out there. Going back and looking at those numbers was shocking. $642? $642 could have bought me several pairs of those killer Fluvog boots that I really wanted in 2017. Honestly, I'm still kind of mad about it. I still dream about those boots. I just imagine right now like a montage of me wearing those boots and like running through a field. But unfortunately, I can't do that montage because I don't have the boots. Fluvog only makes one pair and when they sell out, they never make them again, okay? <sighs> That amount of spending was not sustainable for me. So I made some conscious choices to reduce my spending. So here's how I cut my costs on gluten-free foods by over 60% since my diagnosis. When I look at those extra charges, what's top of the list? Bread. Since my diagnosis, I spent over $100 extra per year on gluten-free bread, which is a travesty because most of that store-bought gluten-free bread wasn't even that good. And I don't even buy bread that often. I buy one loaf maybe every two to three weeks. From my experience, I've seen gluten-free bread prices range from $5 to $15. Well, $5 isn't too bad, Robin. Ba -ba! Any gluten-free loaf that is $5 is tiny, He's so tiny, frozen, mostly made of starch, which means very little nutritional value and is only palatable when toasted. Ta-da! There are more decent breads in the seven to $9 range, either from your local bakery or from a locally sourced brand. This is generally what I was buying. And if you're gluten-free, it's probably what you're buying too. This one smells like arrowroot cookies. I don't know why. And one bakery near me was selling bread for $15 a loaf. Mind you, it was made from almond flour, so the cost of making it was very high, but still, $15 for one loaf of bread? Da, 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 da. I'm just kidding, I'm too cheap to pay $15 for a loaf of bread. And don't even get me started on things like bagels and burger buns. You're looking at two to four dollars a piece. So how did I cut down on my bread costs? And no, I didn't just stop having bread, because that's ridiculous. I started making my own. Now, before you click out of this video and say, I'm not baking my own bread forever, that's crazy. Hear me out. Making gluten-free bread may seem daunting, but it's actually even easier than making regular bread. Once you have one great recipe, the rest is history. I developed a gluten-free bread recipe that doesn't use any blends or mixes. And if I shop in bulk, I can make it for $3 total, which is the same price as a regular gluten loaf of bread. Bonus. It's a proper size. I can finally make a sandwich. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
The best thing is that my bread recipe is super easy and fast to make. I can throw it together in about 10 minutes and within 90 minutes, it's out of the oven. I literally made this this morning when I was preparing for this video. If you're interested in learning how to make my bread recipe, check out my gluten-free baking courses. You can learn how to make this bread in the essentials course, as well as pizza crust, biscuits, pie, cookies, and cake. You know, the six essential food groups. Of course, you don't have to make my recipe, but my point here is that bread is likely one of your biggest expenses, so making your own really does help. Unless I'm in a pinch, I don't buy gluten-free bread anymore. Flour blends and mixes. My second biggest cost in 2017 was on gluten-free flour blends and mixes. I spent an extra $105. By 2019, I had cut that cost down to $25, over 75%. The biggest difference, I stopped buying gluten-free all-purpose blends. I have a whole video where I deep dive into why I stopped using blends, so if you're interested, check it out. I'll link it in the description. Long story short, Gluten-free all-purpose blends can cost you over three times what you would spend on the individual ingredients. And baking with those ingredients will give you a better result and improve your baking in the long run. That's how I've been able to keep the costs of my gluten-free baking down. Whenever possible, I buy my flours in bulk because it's significantly cheaper. Now, bulk is always a risk and some people don't recommend it. You do need to be sure that your bulk store is safe. If you notice that the rice flour bin is next to the vital wheat gluten bin, it's probably not a good place to shop. If you're unsure about the store's allergen protocols, you can always ask a manager. I haven't had any issues though shopping in bulk, but my store has all of the gluten-free flours in one section. So I find that it's pretty safe. If you're a bit unsure about it though, you can just buy the flours individually packaged that are certified gluten-free and it's still cheaper than buying blends. Naturally gluten-free. The last thing I did to reduce my costs is fairly simple, but it's worth mentioning. I ate more naturally gluten-free options. This includes when I go grocery shopping or when I get takeout or go to a restaurant. If you walk down the free from or gluten-free aisle at your grocery store, that little GF label can be enticing. A pasta sauce that's certified gluten-free? For $8? Always read the labels, but most of the time, a tomato-based pasta sauce is totally safe. There are some items I do buy on a regular basis and pay the higher price tag. Things like gluten-free oats, soy sauce, tamari, individual flours, as mentioned, like rice flours, tapioca starch, almond flour, and sometimes crackers. And that's about it. For a snack, I'll usually opt to have an apple with peanut butter instead of a granola bar, or for breakfast, I'll just have a bowl of oatmeal instead of cereal. When I do buy those gluten-free items, I always shop around for the best cost. When I see my bag of oats for $12.99, when I know I can get them for $7.99 at my other grocery store, I wait. I only buy my almond flour at Costco or in bulk because otherwise it's like 20 bucks a bag. And when I want to try a new certified gluten-free item, I wait until it goes on sale. Overall, I try to eat more meals that just happen to be gluten-free. Anything made with rice, vegetables, legumes, or meat, if you eat it, is no more expensive than usual. When you get takeout, if you get pizza, you're gonna be paying that extra surcharge to make it gluten-free. There's that gluten-free tax again. And oftentimes the pizza you get is so small, you don't have any leftovers. Not to mention that a lot of pizza places aren't actually safe for people with celiac. But if you order something like Thai food or Indian food that has lots of naturally gluten-free options, you're not paying any extra. That isn't to say you can never go to your favorite burger joint that has a gluten-free bun or get takeout pizza, but being aware of the cheaper and equally delicious or more delicious options can help you keep your costs down. So there you have it. Make your own bread, stop buying all-purpose blends, and eat more naturally gluten-free options, and you too can save your money. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bread. 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 <laughs> bread. Hello. Why did I turn into a chicken is the question. Sometimes that happens to me. I'll just like blink one eye. Some could call it a wink, but I just call it a one-eyed blink. A one-eyed blink is a wink. That's cute, right?